Hello, and welcome to Getting Started with Amazon EMR. My name is Matthew Liam, and I'm a senior big data architect on the Amazon EMR team. Amazon EMR is the industry leading cloud big data platform for processing vast amounts of data using open source tools such as Apache Spark, Apache Hive, Apache HBase, Apache Hoodie, and Presto. With Amazon EMR, you can run petabyte scale analysis at less than half the cost of traditional on-prem solutions and over three times faster than your standard Apache Spark. In this demo, I'm going to walk you through Amazon EMR cluster monitoring and management capabilities, specifically cluster status, Amazon EMR related logging, application logging and monitoring, and how you can use these to debug and troubleshoot a cluster and the application jobs running on it. The first part in monitoring and managing your EMR cluster is getting the cluster status. Let's start with that. The cluster list in the Amazon EMR console lists all the clusters in your account in AWS region, including terminated clusters. This list is the starting point for monitoring the status of your clusters. It's designed so that you can drill down into each cluster's details for analysis and troubleshooting. After you create a cluster, you can monitor its status and get detailed information about its execution and errors that may have occurred, even after it's been terminated. You can't delete clusters from the cluster history, but using the AWS Management Console, you can use the filter to find a specific cluster. Similar information can be retrieved using the AWS CLI. For example, the List Cluster API can be used to get all my clusters within a certain state. In this example, waiting. Another useful API is the Describe Cluster API. You can get information of a single cluster similar to the information you see in the AWS Management Console. In this example, I get all the details for this specific cluster. These APIs can be used when building data pipelines with dependencies or for auditing purposes. Now that we know how to get the cluster status, the next step is knowing what is actually happening on the EMR clusters. This is useful for troubleshooting failed clusters or knowing when a cluster is ready to run a job. For that, we have Amazon EMR related logging. As the cluster runs, logs are being generated on the master node. By default, every cluster publishes log files to the var log directory on the master node. These logs are only available when the cluster is running and you don't need to enable anything to have log files written on the master node. There are many types of logs written in this path, such as bootstrap action logs, application provisioning logs, Amazon EMR step logs, and instant state logs. These are not all the EMR related logs that are written to the master node and a full list can be found in the link provided. These logs and the ones in the link can also be accessed in S3. If you launch the cluster and specify an Amazon S3 log path, the cluster copies the log files stored in this var log directory on the master node to Amazon S3 in five minute intervals. This ensures that the log files are available after the cluster terminates, whether this is through normal shutdown or due to an error. Now let's look at a few examples at how we can use these logs to troubleshoot a cluster. The first step is to look at the cluster status. In this cluster example, we can see that there is a bootstrap failure on the master instance. Using the instance ID, we can go to the EMR S3 logs, bootstrap actions sub prefix, and look at the standard error file to see the issue and fix it before relaunching the cluster. In this next example, we can see that the cluster failed due to a step failure. Step logs are stored in a separate prefix from the node prefix, and going to the standard error file, we can see that there was an error in running the Spark job due to a wrong argument provided. Now that we know how to get the status of a cluster and the logs related to that cluster, let's move on to application logs and accessing their user interfaces. The first option that we have available are CloudWatch metrics. These metrics are updated every five minutes and automatically collected and pushed to CloudWatch for every EMR cluster. This interval is not configurable and there's no charge for the Amazon EMR metrics reported in CloudWatch. 
Metrics are archived for two weeks after which the data is discarded. The metrics reported by Amazon EMR provide information that you can use to analyze in different ways. For example, if you wanted to track the progress of your cluster, you could look, in, look at the containers allocated or pending. Another useful metric is the isIdle metric, which tracks whether a cluster is live but not currently running any tasks. You can set an alarm to fire when the cluster has been idle for a given period of time, such as 30 minutes. In addition to CloudWatch metrics, Amazon EMR has an application user interface tab. Amazon EMR application history makes it easier for you to troubleshoot and analyze active jobs and job history and provides several viewing options. In here, we have three different options for you to view your application status and logs. Let's start with the persistent application user interfaces. Starting with Amazon EMR version 5.25.0, Persistent application user interfaces links are available for Spark. With Amazon EMR version 6.0.0 and later, Tez UI and the Yarn Timeline server also have persistent application UIs. Persistent application UIs are run off cluster, so cluster information and logs are available for 30 days after an application terminates. Unlike on cluster application user interfaces, Persistent application UIs don't require you to set up a web proxy through a SSH connection. You can simply click the links provided in this tab to launch the UIs. You'll need to be logged into your account to be able to access them. Next is the on-cluster application user interfaces. There are a variety of application history user interfaces that can be run on the cluster, such as Resource Manager UI and Ganglia. In order to access these on-cluster UIs, you'll need to set up an SSH tunnel with dynamic port forwarding. One way of doing this is using Foxy Proxy for Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Microsoft Internet Explorer. Foxy Proxy provides a set of proxy management tools that allow you to use a proxy server for URLs that match patterns corresponding to the domains used by Amazon EC2 instances in your Amazon EMR cluster. To set this up, the first thing you want to do is add Foxy Proxy extension to Chrome or the browser of your choice. Next, go to the link provided here and copy the contents in this section into a text editor. Save the file name as foxyproxy-settings.xml. Following this, go into the Foxy Proxy options and choose Import Export. On the Import Export page, browse to the location of the Foxy Proxy settings XML file you created and choose Open. Choose Replace when prompted to overwrite the existing changes. In your browser, ensure Foxy Proxy is on the Use Proxies based on their predefined patterns and priorities. The last step is creating an SSH tunnel on your local machine. You can use the com this command and replace my key pair with the location and the file name of your .pem file that you've attached to your EMR cluster, replace 8157 with an unused local port, and replace the master instance ID with the public DNS name of your cluster. Now, if you refresh the EMR page, you'll notice that the links are now available. Finally, high-level application history shows a summary of the applications in the EMR console, including key metrics for stage tasks and executors. The summary of the application history is available for all YARN applications. Additional details are provided for Spark applications, but these details are only a subset of the information available through the Spark History UI. This wraps up Amazon EMR monitoring and management capabilities. I hope you enjoyed it and found the information useful. Thank you for your time.